we can bring in the oceanic rain and we need to be conscious it's not about delivering rain on land, it's about nurturing a rain system that can promote agriculture and protect the people involved. So in all cases we want to make sure we don't get flooding but we can deliver timely rain in a gentle soaking manner into agricultural targets. Technology relies on a signal that, we've, that we're able to generate that um, triggers a response from atmospheric patterns. So we're able to observe this using satellite meteorology, extensively available now to everyone who's got access to broadband internet. But we're able to um, utilize that signal sent in sequence to generate an um, incremental deviation in the flow path of these oceanic atmospheric rivers. So the source is the ocean, of course. The vapor um, precipitable moisture flow is in the atmosphere. The winds drive this with the pressure systems adjusting the path of least resistance. But our technology is able to interface that and hack into it, if you like, and make some micro adjustments to allow deviations to occur in the flow pathways. And this is how we broke the drought in Australia in 2005. This is how we put out the fires of Victoria from Black Saturday in 2009. This is how we delivered rain in the desert in Saudi Arabia in 2007 and snow for the first time in history in 2004 in United Arab Emirates. There's been other projects above the radar and some under the radar, but today for the first time we're putting our hand up in front of the media to say this is available. We're going to run this project here to break the drought in the Horn of Africa. We're meeting with cabinet, uh, federal cabinet for Kenya and the Prime Minister and other parties and authorities in the region. We've met extensively with United Nations teams and agencies and we're planning to do this in the most careful manner. Firstly, to bring some gentle rain in to give food for the, crop, uh, food for the cattle and the livestock so milk can be produced so the human survivability can go up. Once that survivability has gone up, then we can look at more substantial rains that can be suitable for crop. What is this technology? Uh, essentially, we're drawing oceanic rain systems that exist over the oceans into geographic targets, into our agricultural areas. Um, the technology uses electromagnetics, so we're not interfering with the atmosphere or with the environment. We're not damaging it. We're not using chemicals fired through rockets like other technologies use. We use a, a very um, gentle but powerful technology launching electromagnetics into the atmosphere mm -hmm. to modify the flow of the weather system over the ocean and drawing it into a target. So to try and uh, keep it simple, we, um, we establish some kind of link with a weather system and once we've seen through satellite meteorology that we have that link we're able to draw that system in incrementally towards the target, such as in this case, the Horn of Africa. Mahindra, you call this project the Global Rain Project? Why the Global Rain Project? Well, let, let me just step back. Uh, ever since the beginning of civilization, mankind has diverted rivers on Earth to wherever we wanted to practice agriculture. Now we look at the atmosphere, the oceanic, 90% of the rain, more than 90% of the rain falls on the ocean. Sure. It's only about less than 5% on Earth. So the 90% that is above the oceans, these are fundamentally atmospheric rivers. And just the way we harvested rivers on Earth, we should be harvesting now with new technology the rivers above the oceans and moving them to a target area. Now, why is it global? Global because climate is changing. We see the floods that are on, the droughts that are on. So weather is being modified by human activities and by natural phenomena. And today we have developed the technology and I am convinced that in 30 years we will be able to confront climate change with technology with which we can modify weather patterns. It's weather modification because climate change has two elements. It gets hotter temperature and the precipitation changes. So moisture patterns change. Now imagine when we get rain, temperature goes down. 
So when you think of climate change, which is hotter areas, and that's the challenge we have in sub-Saharan Africa, that it will get hotter. Many areas that produce crops will not be viable. Mm -hmm. So it is a global phenomena which requires global action, and that is why we are committed to put this in the humanitarian arena to begin with. And, and it should be governed and utilized at the global level by the global community. He's from Australia, you're from Kenya. How did the two of you meet? Well, we met in Qatar. I was director of the Qatar National Food Security Program. And in <coughs> Qatar, as well as in the Gulf countries, the greatest need is of water. Yeah. Water is, is, they have no water. So it has to be produced from desalination, which has a lot of other problems with it. And we just got together and said the most greatest challenge that the earth is facing is water yes. coming into the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Because without water, there is no food. And without water, there is no ecology. So we came together, and I come from a background of uh, working for almost 35 years with the World Bank, the UN, and Qatar on food security, water security. And uh, we got together to see that, because I'm also an expert in climate change, and the only way we can confront climate change is not, you know, we are talking about reducing emissions, but politically it's not going anywhere. And we need urgent action in the coming decade, because after that it's too late. And the only way to do that is to take control and see how we can modify weather to confront and counter the effects of climate change. So we got together and exchanged ideas, because I have the background in development and water, and David with his technology, you know, the two was a good marriage. Um, I'm an industrial designer and have all uh, my life dreamed of the ability for technology to influence and work with the environment in a harmonious way, not aggressively attacking but working together with the environment. And so we started uh, in the 90s developing a system that could influence some local weather and uh, we were testing and testing and testing. Finally, I was getting phone calls from farmers saying, can you also turn the rain off, please? And, uh, of course, we were able to adjust it down or up incrementally. So we were able to satisfy that request. So in the late 90s, we registered the company, Acquiesce, and uh, we took on some private shareholders that are now involved, and we took the company forward over the years to the point that now we were confident in uh, August uh, this year to present to the United Nations that we have a solution for the drought and famine in Africa. I mean, this is, I, I think this is perhaps, uh, in my own words, the most, I mean, and the great, one of the greatest innovations I've ever had. I mean, is, anyone, is there anyone else who's doing this? We've heard of some, uh, perhaps, uh, historic rainmakers that have worked and achieved things uh, in Africa particularly. But there's other technologies out there where scientists are working with cloud seeding and um, ionification where you deliver ions that help create an environment suitable for rain droplets to form. Uh, there are some other technologies I've heard of, uh, perhaps in the US, where they're modifying or trying to modify the ionosphere <laughs> to get uh, weather changes. I'm not sure how accurate that is. But as far as I know, no one has this particular stream of technology where we're, we're looking larger scale. It's, it's modifying a flow corridor gently, incrementally, to deliver rain adjustment into the, the required area. Relief agencies say the drought in the Horn of Africa is the worst in six decades, blamed mostly on adverse effects of global warming and climate change in which weather patterns have become most unpredictable. But what if its devastating effects could have been arrested early enough? What if man can go against the forces of nature and bring rain when the skies refuse to open up? Well, two men claim they can do exactly that. David Miles and Dr. Mahendra Shah of Aqueous Technology claim they can in the next 90 days make rain fall in strategic areas around the Horn of Africa. Today, 90% of the world's rain falls back on the ocean. They say using electromagnetic technology, they can attract the clouds bearing this rain to arid areas and they could do so just before the onset of short rains around 15th of October. The company says it uses ground-based servers to launch a signal at the targeted clouds and alter their paths to get them to where they're needed. We'll bring those early rains that can get that growth, that can allow the cattle to feed and then produce milk, which will increase human survivability. At that point in time when human survivability goes up because the cattle are feeding, 
then we can allow the heavier rains to come in. The whole project will cost about 900 million Kenya shillings for a period of about two years. But in a strongly worded statement, the weatherman says the technology is yet to be scientifically proven to be true, adding that the Kenya Meteorological Department was yet to buy into the idea of artificially induced rain, at least not using the techniques the Australian farm is fronting. In a paid-up advert, the department added that the project is also not known by the Global Weather Agency, the Weather Meteorological Organization. From here we are now going to travel to the World Meteorological Organization in Geneva and present to them also the technology. The technology is very incremental and you will only be taking small amounts from the oceanic rain. African countries currently using weather modification technology to increase rainfall are Mali, Burkina Faso, Morocco and South Africa, while outside Africa it's widely practiced in China, Israel, Thailand and Russia. The meteorological department in the advert said that it had its own proposals for weather modification in Kenya, which it planned to roll out in phases. Some of the key activities in phase one would be to carry out feasibility studies in the Kericho and the Hills area on how to suppress hailstorms so as to protect tea plantations.